Berger, the archangel, the blessed by God angel. Nope, not Saturn. He's a false god. Quick knowledge of false gods on God's things. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Um, yes, today is the Saturn. All right, well, topic of this message is of the 3H nation that, you know, I feel inspired to uh, do concerning, I don't know, I was uh, at the uh, river walk and I did show people the chant and, you know, I worship and then when they had worshiping service, it was like, you know, I was worshiping and God was speaking to me. And in my worship, he was speaking to me and he was letting me know about uh, the idea of boldness, you know, uh, and because here's the thing, we were uh, having a service in, in where people pass by at the river walk. People are looking at us, you know, uh, praise and worshiping and this, you know, this boldness of our praise and our worship concerning that we express to the people that were walking by is, you know, in their eyes and what they saw, you know, and how boldly we need to perform, how boldly we need to perform, whether it's praise and worship towards these people to let people know that God is real, that God is true that God is powerful and if you accept Jesus Christ in your life he will make a great impact in your life we have to show that to those people that are unknown to that ideal reality is what really I felt when I was in worship at the service that you know uh, we need to be about you know as Christians that we need to be bold among the eyes of the people that are sinners that is amongst but that's but that's what Christianity is supposed to be all about that you know I was intrigued to this uh, scripture that I ran into uh, looking for boldness and 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 in the early parts of Christianity uh, Acts 4 came across uh, the situation of looking for a scripture and and, and, and I want you to uh, I want you to look at the scripture but there's a lot of stuff to the scripture that I was reading you know of course we know that Peter and John healed the guy and uh, uh, in front of the uh, temple and that's what you know took place beforehand but it's interesting of what words uh, Peter is saying, I believe, in Acts 4. See, I kind of like the name Acts. Uh, Acts. I know it's called the Acts of the Apostles. You know what I'm saying? But it's something about that word Acts. But guess what? It, it, you know, it could be, unfortunately, for certain Christians... You could take that S off and put actor or actresses, or you can put on that S word, uh, action, that you are a Christian of action and not about acting or being an actress, but that is another message. But anyway, um, that, uh, now I, uh, the acts four and 29 but I really want to dangle a little, a little. now I want to talk about uh, I believe what Peter was uh, prophesying I mean it says and Peter and John oh, uh, 19 this is 19 and Peter and John and, uh, answered and said unto them whether it be right in the eyesight of God to hearken unto you more and more unto God, judge ye, for we cannot speak things which we have seen or heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go. 
finding nothing how they might punish them, you know, the Christians, you know, punish the Christians for healing a person, you know, the religious people that are uh, in charge of this, the first enemies of religion, I mean, the first enemies of the church, because as what you should know, those that study Acts, in the beginning of Acts, the Pharisees, uh, of course, gave uh, Jesus Christ the pilot and had Jesus killed. Now Christianity is coming uh, in its infancy. Christianity is coming in the infancy, and now some for some apparent reason now uh, religious people want to kill these Christians. I wonder why they want to kill these Christians, these religious people. I mean, is it because they was trying to kill and get rid of Jesus Christ? And now people are being like Jesus Christ. Now religious people killing them. And the sad part of this, what I'm telling you, that now the church, the body of Christ is embracing the idea of religion, of knowing that you will look at Acts and see that re religious people that was Paul, that was Saul, that wanted to stone Stephen for representing being a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Religious people were killing the first killers of Christianity. Hmm. Just want to put that out there. But anyway, um, uh, the thing is, so when they, you know, when they further, okay, what, no, for, okay, they might punish them, but because of the people, for they punish them because of the people, for all men glorify God, for that which was done for the men was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of this healing was shown. See, they're going to get punished for healing a man. Peter and John going to get punished for healing a man by religious people, surprisingly. Um, being let go, they went to their other own company and they reported all that to the chief you know, religious people, here they come. Chief priests and elders had said unto them, and here, when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God. And watch this. I want you to catch this, Christians. You know, that idea that when the day of Pentecost arrived, that the Christians were all in what? With one accord with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which had made the he made heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them in one accord. Uh, th that is quite interesting reading that. Now they were talking about a prophecy of David that I want to kind of go by, you know what I'm saying? But here's what I want to talk about in the topic. Oh yeah, let me read it. And now the Lord, behold, their threatenings. The and now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. With all boldness, and and look. They were threatening Christians to pretty much not be Christians. You know, this threatening, you know, I love that the word threatening, and that means uh, having a hostile or deliberately frightened quality of, or manner. You know, they were threatening Christians, you know what I'm saying, uh, to really not be uh, Christians and but 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 the grant unto thy servants that with some boldness no with a, a, a little boldness no but all boldness they might speak thy word see now watch this uh somebody could have said with boldness that's it. They could have just said with bonus. 
No, they didn't say that. They said with all boldness. You know, with all boldness, they made boldness a, 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 a measurement. There's a measurement of boldness that is supposed to be done. Watch this. Concerning the servants, servants of the Lord, do, people that are truly serving the Lord, is supposed to come with a boldness. And the uh, topic of this message is talking about, you know, uh, the reality of all boldness. All boldness, not some boldness or somewhat boldness, but all boldness. Look, when the Holy, what I love about reading Acts, you see how the Holy Spirit impacted a lot of people. My favorite, one of my favorite impacts of the Holy Ghost is Stephen. You know what I'm saying? The Stephen, that Stephen came out. And, you know, and, and what I like about the Stephen part that I think people don't recognize in that, uh, in that situation, that Stephen was quoting, quoting scripture. You know what I'm saying? In those days, the priests and the, you know, people, they had the uh, Torah or whatever, you know, all kind of the literature. The, the people didn't have the literature at that time, but the, you know, scrub, high priests and scribes and Pharisees, they had a literature. But Stephen was quoting word for word, you know what I'm saying, of the literature of the word of God. He was quoting word for word, you know what I'm saying, of the literature of the word of God. The, the Holy Spirit gave him that power for utterance, you know what I'm saying, to quote the words little by little, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 of course, I believe the uh, Pharisees are jealous, you know, of, of, of uh, Stephen's ability. I think they were jealous because he was quoting the scripture word for word without even, without even um, reading. You know, he was quoting and kept quoting. And then the, then the scribes and Pharisees said, we got trouble. This guy, Stephen, you know, causing trouble and, you know, quoting, really quoting the scriptures of of, of the in the Old Testament without even having the um not even having the scribe. You know what I'm saying? He was quoting words flowing with it too. You know what I'm saying? It's you just find it in Acts seven that he's just quoting everything out, you know, in order and how what everything that happened in detail concerning Abraham and and and, 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 and Joseph. And he talks about almost everything. In detail, that's what the Holy Spirit is supposed to give you that revelation of power to speak things and see things in detail and aspects according to the power of that I love it and I believe they stone him because he's jealous of how he has the ability to do that greater abilities than those scribes and Pharisees. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know about you know Stephen, I've kind of been through something like that, but anyway, the thing is, we supposed to come with that boldness. Steve Boldness, Peter Boldness, John Boldness, Steve Boldness. There's a lot of people in the scriptures that show forth the great boldness that it was demanded for, that the, when, you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, gives you the demand to speak what thus saith the Lord. We're supposed to operate in that power, Christians. We're supposed to operate in that power wherever we go, whether it's at school, whether it's at job, whether anywhere we go, we're supposed to have a boldness to speak the word of God. Now, we don't have to be like, don't say it, the Lord, da, 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 da. No, a boldness to speak what God says in your spirit to some, uh, somebody that, that, that they need encouragement, that they need uplifting, that they need this, you know, love, you know what I'm saying? Showing forth this joy of the Lord, you know, uh, being joyful, our joy needs to be bold. Our peace needs to be bold. Our fruit needs to be bold. Uh, I, I'm, I'm coming up with this idea called putting Jesus Christ on 3D is what this idea of boldness is what I'm all about. That we need to be, when Christ is developing us, we need to put our Jesus Christ on 3D that it's coming at people. That the, you will see the spirit coming at through us. That you will see the love coming out through us. It's what the all boldness idea is all about. Putting Jesus Christ on 3D is what I'm going to be talking about today. So that's the message. I hope you got it. That you want to be putting Jesus Christ on 3D. To God be the glory of him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.